even Wells 23, it was clear by that time that it was a lost cause. The bowling figures for the Australians, McGrath was able to celebrate that Man of the Series award with 2 for 26. Adam Dale again bowled really well, 2 for 27. Julian 2 for 18. Mike Warren none for 23. And Shane Warren 3 for 16 would have been very happy not only with his performance but with the fact that uh, Darren Lehman was man of the match here for his brilliant batting and that partnership he shared with Damien Martin. So a fine performance from the Australians. They did very well all the way through in the series. Perhaps a little lucky, although they played brilliantly in Sydney, but uh, they did come out on top of England there in a surprising result, and here they were simply too good. Well, that's the end of the Carlton and United series. A triumph for the Australians and Shane Warne, their skipper, who were very innovative and very good all the way through. A lot of celebrations here for the Australians and their skipper and a great performance from them all the way through. It's been a very good series. We thought it was going to be marred by the weather. We came out on top with that and the Australians came out on top over England. For the moment, from the MCG, it's goodbye. Those delayed highlights of the cricket were in place of the planned edition of Space 1999. The series continues next Saturday at 4.40 here on BBC Two. Ever fancied making loads of money? We give two teams a thousand quid each and they've got one working week to make as much as they possibly can. And they get to keep all the profits, but we tell them what to trade. First up, arts and antiques. Buy things that people understand. 70 pounds. 700 quid. 5,000. So even if you don't know you wore whole from your elbow... You've got a good eye. ...could you still make a profit? I've been doing within 15 minutes. A new series, Wheeler Dealers, starts Thursday, 8.30, BBC Two. Semi-final frames from the Masters Snooker Tournament now on BBC Two, presented by David Vine. Yes, it's Ireland versus Scotland from Wembley, Benson and Hedges Masters semi-final. Good evening. That's the Saturday tea time menu for you in this 25th anniversary event. The Scot is Anna McManus, who won the title in 94, and already this time he's knocked out the defending champion, Mark Williams of Wales. Ken Doherty of Ireland, uh, he's never got to the final. This is his eighth attempt, but he's certainly doing well this week because he's knocked out two former champions, Steve Davis and Ronnie O'Sullivan. Here's where it fits into the draw with tonight's match. John Higgins, the world champion and world number one, trying for the triple, trying to win the Masters for the first time against the outsider, Anthony Hamilton. 
So the bookmakers make him the outsider. Higgins is the favourite, as he's been really throughout the whole championship. Six to four on second favourite Doherty against McManus, and then Anthony Hamilton at seven to one. And Ken Doherty, the former world champion, is of course the man with that little Irish twinkle in his eye. If I thought I had any strengths, I would just say, you know, that you never give up and you always keep trying and I'd say I battle away until the until the last ball is potted. Ken Doherty has a unique record in snooker. He is the only player to have won the World Junior, the World Amateur and the World Professional Championships. Ken has a great natural all-round game, a consistent good long potter who also doesn't force the ball. His shrewd tactical game and good shot selection always make him a force to be reckoned with. He's got a good safety game, good tactical, scores well. Um, you know, tough, tough player to beat. He's another good all-rounder, you know. Safety, break building, tactical. Ken also has one of the best temperaments in the game. Cool and collected, very rarely does his expression change whenever the status of the match. But perhaps his greatest asset is his fighting quality. He never knows when he's beaten. Ken will never hand you the match. You'll have to win it from him. He's extremely cute. He's a very, very intelligent player. Uh, and, and also very, very difficult to play against. You know, if you don't play well against Ken, you know, you've got your work cut out. One of them sort of players. If he has a weakness, it's his lack of consistency, which comes from occasional lapses in concentration. I can't believe it. And up to 35. Well, neither can I. Obviously, he didn't have the ideal angle on the red and took his eye off the pot. Ken was probably trying a little bit too hard being world champion. He didn't have the best of seasons, but put up a great defence of his title, losing out to John Higgins. He should be a little bit more relaxed this season and prove that he is a player capable of winning any major title. Yeah, so is this one. Alan McManus has scored four places below Ken Doherty in the world rankings. The first man ever to beat Stephen Hendry at Wembley when he won the title here in 94. This is his fourth time in all he's been to the semi-final stages. Now, he and Doherty have met 11 times, and you'll see there's really nothing much between them, just a one in favour of McManus, and that includes a win here in the quarterfinal of 94 in his title year. But the last time they met out in Thailand, Ken Doherty got it 5-3 in a quarter final. Well, the early frames you may have seen on grandstand, it's still the best of 11. The first of six for a place in tomorrow's final. One all there, and to be honest, they were pretty scrappy. Let's go into frame three, and Ken Doherty's just got a one-point lead here, studying the possibilities. Commentators Ray Edmonds and John Virgo. Well, that's a... Strange type of shot from Ken. He knew he'd be leaving the red. I assumed he'd just concentrate on getting the cue ball tight to the ball cushion. Now he's not done that. This is half a chance for Alan McManus. I think he's got to go all out for this pot and try and cannon into those reds near the top cushion. With a bit of luck, he could finish up on the pink. This could work out in his favour. Good pot, just needs a bit of luck. Well, he disturbed the Reds, but he didn't get the pot. So he's let, a, he's let Ken Doherty off there. It's amazing what? rain. What looked to be a poor safety shot from Ken Doherty has now set up the frame for him. Yep. It's often, you often wonder whether luck is good or bad. You don't really know till the end of the frame, but... I thought Alan played that last shot in a peculiar way. I thought it was more of a stun shot to go into the reds rather than just the top of the ball, but didn't quite see the angle from here, perhaps the way he saw it, but Seven. it could be an expensive miss. Now, 
8. sure there was nothing in the betting between uh, these two players today on this match it would have been so narrow very difficult to pick a winner and even now it looks as if Ken may go 2-1 in front but I still think it's uh, a match 21. that looks likely to be nip and tuck all the way Twenty-two. Well, he needed to be better on the pink than that to make sure of winning this frame, or certainly getting a, to the point that Alan needed snooker. This isn't quite as easy a pot as it might have been. Twenty-two. 